Yeah, but yeah. since we're talking about efficiency, bro, uh, yeah. we see a uh, big, big, <laughs> big truck company still making big moves. Uh, mm. We got this company. I'm gonna read the story here. It's 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 really a two parts uh, story here. You got two companies uh, that either sold their whole company to another trucking company or sold a portion or a sector. Okay. Of their company to another truck company. So at first we're gonna talk about Ford Air, uh, which is the truck and logistic company. Uh uh they um uh, went through well, they're going through major strategic shifts, including the sale of its uh business unit that they sold okay. the hub through. Yeah. As it refocuses on core offerings, admin declining financial. Earlier this year. 2023 Ford Air announced the $262 million sale of its final mile delivery unit to Hub Group. The company said this support this supports its efforts to diversify into more non-asset based logistics service. So they selling a unit that's not actually of the trucking but more on the brokering and the, the logistics side. Okay. But anyway, yeah. Ford Air faced challenges in the first quarter of this year. They reported that they had a 8.5 percent revenue decline, a 38.8 okay. decrease in operating income for its expedited freight sector. This okay. appears to have motivated the final mile sale. So these are two different divisions that they have. Uh, so what we are. Uh, 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 suspicious about is if they sold their final mile segment to Hub Group to put more money into their expedited freight set. But, um, you know, but more on this, CEO Tom Smith, he said the company's grow forward strategy is focused on expanding high value LTL freight business. Selling the poor performing final mile unit aligns with streamlining operations around LTL. Anybody who's been paying attention to the news and on social media, we know that the uh, the shippers are paying higher rate for mm -hmm. LTL. For LTL. Yeah, right. exactly. So, uh, 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 furthermore, the sale comes at a time of strategic realignment for Ford Air. While financial struggles continue, the company aims to focus where it sees greater growth opportunities in its core offering. So the way I look at that, Hub Group is really helping them out. So all trucking companies don't compete with each other because Hub Group probably could have easily just uh, fell back any other company as well just to see if they was going to hurt any more to put them out of commission. But they actually, right. in a sense, possibly bailed them out. Uh, bail for that out by buying this division so that they could possibly invest more into the expedited uh segment but we also got another company it's a canadian transportation and logistic company tfi international okay they just announced that they acquired the u.s based flatbed trucking operator uh Dask in a deal valued at check this out 1.1 billion dollars in the middle of a freight recession uh, a recession mm -hmm. very interesting to me so right. a little breakdown of how, how how this purchase came about tfi is set to pay eight dollars and thirty cent per share for das representing they will be representing a 69 percent premium on its recent share price the acquisition will expand TFI's truckload segment and make it one of the largest truckload businesses in Canada. Dasky operates a fleet of over 4,500 tractors and 10,500 flatbed trailers, providing heavy haul transportation across North America. The company specializes in hauling cargo like agricultural products, construction materials, and oversized loads requiring specialized According to TFI, the purchase supports their strategy to grow their truckload operation. It also provides exposure to industrial and specialized freight markets. TFI state they may eventually spin off the combined truckload business into a separate public company, allowing TFI to focus on its other segments like 
LTL and logistics. The deal is expected to close in the second quarter of 2024. It comes during okay. a period of softened freight demand compared to pandemic highs. This major acquisition represents further consolidation in the trucking industry and TFI's effort to expand their truckload scale and offer. Now, I want people to focus on this part here. Yeah. TFI will buy, that, well, they will pay $8.30 per share for Dansky. They will be representing 69%, not 100, 69% of the premium on its recent share price. Now, let me break that down. Okay. Whoever is the other 31% shareholder still got stake in this company. Mm. You see what I mean? So right. that's what I want people to understand when we're looking at this stuff and when we criticize in corporate and all this nonsense that's going on, we're talking about people with billions of dollars who never drove a truck, never been in the truck industry, and they're, they're investing into the industry and absorbing everything in the industry from the independent guy who actually got blood, sweat, and tears in this game. Right. And and, and that's the ugly sight. I, I saw a video, uh, I, sh I should have saved it and posted it here, where the uh, the owner of Dansky, I can't think of his uh, first name, but his last name is Dansky. And he said in the interview, he said, when, when this was brought to me about buying this uh, heavy haul trucking division, I was like, I don't know anything about trucks, but mm -hmm. somebody talked him into going going on and investing into the business, and he just made billions on top of billions by doing that. So that's what we got to understand, and we have to ask the question: Are are we really in a freight recession, or does it only apply to certain people in the industry? Meaning, right. not not by color, but by class. The yeah. class that you in in this industry, whether you're small, medium, or just large. See, you got uh, mega companies, corporate companies, and, and so forth. If you small, medium, or large, you might be feeling the hit of this stuff. Yeah. You know? And, uh, and one thing I wanted to point out that, that's interesting to me. Uh, with the hub group and, and uh, forward air story, right. uh, hub group is giving that they're, they're going to be paying uh, forward air two hundred and sixty two million in cash. Mm. Basically, they're gonna write them a check mm. <laughs> two hundred and sixty two million cash, not over five years, not terms, not a hundred million now, and and the rest over a certain time. No, two hundred sixty. But they project million. it's gonna make four hundred eighty one million the first year, right? And every year right. after, right? Right, because Hub Group they said just you know for for the past year, uh, the end of third quarter they generated two hundred eighty eighty nine million doing that specific business model. So it made sense for them. Hey, we're gonna go ahead and and buy this, you know, because this will, like you said, that projection. Hey, we can make double that basically. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And my issue is, is that, again, like I said earlier on, on, on this recording, is that in a recession or a depression, we all supposed to be doing bad. How the hell is this happening? <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I don't go along with, well, you know, that's a bigger company, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's bull crap to me. If we're in a recession or a depression, why are these companies still the companies like Swift, uh, uh, Hub Group, uh, Flexport, who bought uh, Convoy Software? Right. How are they still able to make these investments? And they got us believing it's a freight recession. So, so somebody need to answer that. Well, but we might need to be careful because if we put too much heat on, we might get another regulation tacked on us from the FMCSA. <laughs> Well, that's exactly what happened, you know. <laughs> so what we say, um, they'll come up with one regulation, uh, which they they don't call it a new regulation. They call it just a a hearing because they didn't they don't do actual rulings on everything. Right. And so they'll have one, and then while you're fighting that one, they'll come up with another one, 
And so you stop fighting about the original one and go to this new one and fight. So now you're everywhere trying to represent yourself in these wildfires. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. Right. So you know, so <laughs> again, like I said earlier, when and are we going to do something? Shouldn't yeah. we be tired by now of this bull crap going on? Man, these people are telling us one thing and then doing it right in our face. I mean, hey, you ever been with a girl and she's like, ah, I can't kick it tonight. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm gonna go to bed early. Yeah. yeah gonna, you know, you see, you know what I'm saying? You go to McDonald's and get you something to eat and there she go. Three <laughs> hours later, passing by with her friends or another dude or something. Right there in your face. And then when you ask her about it, want to act like you didn't just see that. Yeah. That's what they're doing to us in the in, in, in the freight industry. They telling us it's a freight recession. And 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 they paint the picture so well. Convoy goes out of business, yellow goes out of business. Let me tell y'all something. Them rich people got friends. The name disappeared, but the business stays. It just stays under a different umbrella. I mean, you just heard me say that uh 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 what's that T? TFI, yeah, that was the story. TFI, they uh, only buying in 69% premium ownership. So they still leaving them a little bit left to have a, a, a ownership in with that 31%, whoever they are. Uh, Whether it's Dansky or whatever. Right. These, these people don't go nowhere. It's just the label chain. Hmm. You know, it's just like great value and uh, 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 great value mayonnaise and uh, uh, the name brand mayonnaise. Okay, uh, it, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it's gonna be some similar taste to it. It's just a different label on. It. That's it. And that's what we got to understand. That's why we have to understand that unity is very important. Mm -hmm. Because they playing games with us. They sitting around. They they getting richer while we're hurting. And then what's so crazy is when you look at the economy, the economy's not doing bad. It's just the transportation portion of it. I like to know who came up with the economic model to be able to separate that because it used to work, all of it used to work hand in hand together. That's mm -hmm. what makes me feel like somebody got their thumb on the scale. Because when you start altering the economic model, which is supposed to, to, to uh, um, perform automatically, based off what the economy do. I don't understand how you could say that we got a freight recession, but the economy is good. <laughs> I don't understand that. I mean, we don't eat digital food. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm not understanding that. Somebody just really have to educate me on that, and, and, and I love to learn. So if it's somebody that can educate me on that, I'm more than open to listen. Cause that that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, maybe maybe we can get an economist on here and, and try to explain something. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Something like that. Exactly. You know, just expect me to call you out on BS if it don't make sense. I'm gonna tell you, hey, that don't make sense. You know that. You, you know what I'm saying? You better come with a higher level of explaining that to where you just absolutely going over my head because mm -hmm. a lot don't get past me. Even when it get past me, it don't get past me. I'll come back a week later and bring up some stuff because yeah. you know what I'm saying? Cause I don't want you to think you got me. <laughs> <laughs> and no, sir. No, sir. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm just not getting how, I mean, $1.1 billion. Yeah. That's a lot. In the middle of a and, recession. Yeah. 1.1 billion. And it's not the whole company. So, It's like wow. they said, it's like they said, you know what, y'all having some financial troubles. We're going to come in and we're going to buy these shares. We're going to make money with you. And then later on down the road, you might see TFI sell their shares back to Dansky. But we'll be to forgot about this story. Mm -hmm. Unless yeah. it's a journalist that pulls this up and bring it back up. If, if and when that goes down. We'll been to forget about that Dansky wants to own that percentage of the company anyway. Right. 
So, yeah. yeah, that's why I wanted to bring that up about, you know, I just want to know, man, if you guys in the com, it, it, man, if, if you guys just get in the comment, what do you think about that? I mean, just tell me. I I I, I like to know because I I don't think I'm the smartest person, but I know damn well I'm not the dumbest either. <laughs> yeah. So they had 4,500 trucks. Okay. Yeah. 4,500 trucks and, and 10,500 10, trailers. They was pulling oversized specialized equipment. Right. Just pencil stuff. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That uh, milk and honey. Yep. Yeah. And I know so, some of you guys are gonna say, um. Well, I pull dry bands. That don't affect me. You heard me say that TFI has an LTL division, dry band division as well. So they're uh, around, you know, I call it rounding the wagons around. Them. Yeah. Because they're not just standing in their own division of dry band and LTL. They're expanding out. Right. Into they, more. Yeah, because they in the agriculture, manufacturing, and construction. Right. That's, you know. You know yeah 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 so that's that's coming into your sector agriculture and manufacturing that's coming into your sectors right right and 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 not only just just with the purchase of uh 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 69 of dansky uh they they're it also opened doors up for the business that they already have it also opened up new doors for them in this country Mm. which a lot of drivers been complaining about Canadian drivers and Mexican drivers coming over and, and uh, assisting with dropping the rate. Yeah. So now you got a Canadian based company that uh, bought up most of an American based company. You're going to see a lot of Canadian drivers now with a purpose now coming through here with a purpose. Hmm.